Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today I'm going to be reviewing Burning Shadows. Now, I'm going to be doing something different. Um, I know a lot of people who have reviewed Burning Shadows have used a format where they show like a slideshow or something. I'm going to kind of be doing a similar thing. Not really like a slideshow per se. Like, this isn't a slideshow, this is literally just pictures in OBS. Um, but, I'm going to be doing it that format. I do have a bit of a system I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to have a thing that says what the card is going to be best with, and then what the card can get countered by, and then I'm also going to be having a rating system, which um, I'm going to try and do an original rating system, and I'm going to be doing my system out of 10, so the card will be rated from 1 to 10 on how good it is, 10 being the best, 1 being it's not very playable, um, um, and I chose a select few cards that I think are going to be worth talking about at least, even if they're not going to be very playable. I know I left out some cards because I left out some promos and stuff. We don't have the full Burning Shadows scan yet, so I left out a few cards. But if you guys can please go on to hit a like on this video because this took me so long to make. I, it took me like four hours to make this video and make all the pictures so that I could do the video. So if you guys would really be nice enough to leave a like and subscribe if you're new because of how long this took me. It took me a long time to make. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting things off with Galissapod GX, the first GX in the set. Galissapod, definitely one of the better GXs in the set. Um, it's attack first impression, which is probably why it's going to be so good. For one, Grass Energy does 30 damage. If this Pokemon was on your bench and became your active Pokemon this turn, it does 90 more damage. So you can do 120. First impression works like Scizor EX's attack. Um, and Ghostopod can be used with Force Giant Plants, which is really good. It's other attack, Armor, Press, uh, 3 for 100, taking 20 less, not bad, it technically gives Ghostopod 230 HP. On a stage 1 that you can get out and turn 1 with Force is pretty OP. Crossing Cut does 150, you know, with the Choice Band, you can one-shot something and then switch it and then set up First Impression, which is pretty dang good. I'm gonna be show now what it, well, I'm gonna be showing you guys what Ghostopod is gonna be good with. Mainly, I think it's going to be good with stuff like Super Scoop Up. You can Super Scoop Up Glossopod with Force Giant Plants in play and then go from there. Um, Zoroark, I think it'll be good with because you can use Stand In. Um, and it also, since it's a stage 1, you can use it with Evolutions. So you can combo the Evolutions with uh, Glossopod. So we could be seeing Evolutions with Zoroark. And um, Zoroark, I think, is good because you can Stand In and then put on your bench and then, you know, bring it back up with retreating for free with the float stone on Zork and then you use first impression. I think Glossopod will be used there. There's some talk with the Sidueye Glossopod, which has been doing good in Japan apparently, and then it could also be good with Promo Lorantis so that you can take one shots with first impression. Now Glossopod is weak to fire, so you're obviously going to be smacked by Flareon EX. Um Volcanion's gonna wreck it. Also, the new Salazzle will wreck it. I didn't include Salazzle on this list because I don't actually know if it's coming out of Burning Shadows. I think it is, but Salazzle is going to be a potential threat too, so there are some Pokemon that can wreck it. Be weak to fire does suck, but Glissapod is very good. There's a lot of ways you can run it. I think Glissapod is definitely one of the better GX in the set. I am going to give Glissapod an 8 out of 10 since it is pretty playable. The next one is going to be Charizard GX. Charizard GX is, of course, going to be a very interesting attacker. <laughs> And it's funny, this card is mostly going to be used for its GX attack. Um, so, it's 250 HP, stage 2, fire type, wing attack, and Crimson Storm are really nothing to write home about. You can technically use Crimson Storm with the new Kawaii card, um, but it's not really that good. But we do have Raging Out GX, which is, I think, what you're going to use this card for. Discard the top 10 cards of your opponent's deck. That is really, really powerful. Um, that makes perfect mill, and the best partners you can play it with are probably going to be stuff like Houndoom EX with Melting Horn. You're going to probably, you can use it with Sylveon too. Sylveon's already a bit of a stally mill deck, so you can use it with Sylveon. You can also use it with the brand new Rhyperior, which can also add to the mill, even though that would be really clunky, because that's like, what, two stage twos? Um, Charizard, I think, is definitely going to be a really cool card with Raging Out. I don't think it's going to be that good, but it definitely adds some more light to Mill. Unfortunately, I think Mill is going to be kind of not very playable because of a certain card that's probably going to be best deck in format. Um, but again, I like Charizard. You can also use Ho-Oh GX also. You can, it's best with Ho-Oh GX. You can use Ho-Oh's GX attack, but that's if you want to use Kawaii with Charizard instead of using Raging Out. I'm probably butchering that supporter, by the way, but yeah. So Charizard GX is okay with its GX attack, however it's countered pretty hardly by like water types like Ninetales and Volcanion. If you wanted to play like a Charizard stall deck, you can't do that because Volcanion and Ninetales are really popular, they're water types, also Lapras wrecks it too. Um, wait, is Charizard, I don't even think Charizard is weak to water, I think it's weak to lightning. 
I may be wrong there. Um, if I am, then uh, correct me in the comments. But I think its biggest weakness is going to be Gardevoir GX, which literally just makes Raging Out GX be completely worthless unless you mill them completely to win the game. Because Gardevoir's attack, Twilight, um, just basically gets 10 cards from your discard pile back in your deck. Basically making it so that Charizard will have no way of actually being able to beat a Gardevoir deck because they'll just get all those cards you discarded back in their deck. So Charizard, I'm going to give a 3 out of 10. I think its potential is there, but I think Gardevoir just completely smokes it. Not to mention, um, I think it's weak to water. It's a stage 2, so even if you wanted to use it in Mill, like Houndoom or Sylveon, it would cost you quite a bit since you'd have to run candies, which cuts into like your hammers and your supporter counts. So I think Charizard GX is mediocre, so I'll give it a 3 out of 10 since it is interesting. Next up is ho -Oh GX. I think ho -Oh GX is really cool. It's got the GX attack, Eternal Light, which is, I think, the big thing about it. Put three of any combination of Fire, Pokemon GX, or EX um, from your discard pile onto your bench. This is really good because it can be any type. It doesn't have to be a basic, which means you can probably just put stuff like Houndoom on your bench, Incineroar on your bench, Charizard on your bench. Unfortunately, there's not really many Fire GX or EX Pokemon that aren't basics that are worth going for. Like, you're not going to do this for Volcanion since Volcanion is already a basic. Plus, it has to be EX and GX, so you could really only do Houndoom, um, Incineroar, and Charizard, which I think Incineroar will be your best bet since you can set up Hustling Strike. Um, Incineroar can be a little bit quicker thanks to the fact you don't have to run as many rare candies because you can put three Incineroars from your discard pile on your bench, and this sets you up for the rest of the game, I think. So I think Incineroar ho -Oh is going to be the way to go. Incineroar, it just seems like every set they're trying to make it better. Like, we got Oracorio and Burning and uh, Gardens Rising, now we're getting Ho-Oh, GX, and Burning Shadows. Um, ho -Oh is okay. Phoenix Burn could be good in Volcanion, um, since it does 20 more damage than Turnator, so if you really need to take a one-shot, you got Phoenix Burn. Um, but I do think ho -Oh has potential. Now, it is weak to Lightning, so Tapu Koko kind of wrecks it, since I think Koko might pop up more thanks to Acerola and Super Scoop Up. Um, Volcanion and Ninetales will wreck it, because if you're trying to get Fire Pokemon in place... Uh, oh, you know, Charizard is weak to Water, I was right. <laughs> um, I just seen on this image here. Because um, I had the text covering the uh, weakness. But Ninetales and Volcanion will wreck you because if you're just getting Fire Pokemon on your bench, well, you're going to play against a Water deck, you're going to get wrecked. There's really no good Fire Pokemon to put on your bench that don't have a weakness to Water quite yet. So I think Ho-Oh definitely will be good later on down the road when we actually get better EX, GX, Stage 2 Pokemon. For now, I think Ho-Oh is kind of just there to be cool. I think it still has potential with Incineroar as a Rogue deck, so we'll see. Um, so we'll give Ho-Oh GX a 6 out of 10. Um, next up is Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini um, is pretty cool. It's definitely going to be, I think, a 1 or 2 of a water box since it has the attack Hydro Shot. Um, you discard 2 water energy from this Pokemon, just 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. This is great to snipe stuff. You can snipe the Evolutions if that gets in your way. You can snipe um, Garbodor. You can snipe really anything you want. Now, some things you can't snipe for one shot, like other EX or GX, and you certainly won't be able to one shot. Um, stuff like Vikavolt, which kind of sucks, but I think Hydro Shot is a good attack regardless. You can finish something off. Um, Tapu Storm could also be good. We've seen that Ice Beam hasn't really been proven to be very good. Um, so Tapu Storm could be good. Shuffle your opponent's active Pokemon, all cards attached to it back in their deck. But if they have no bench Pokemon, you can't use it. I think Tapu Storm will be good to get, you know, force your opponent to shuffle back, like, a Stage 2 Pokemon, like a Decidueye, um, and, like, something like Metagross and Gardevoir. So I think Tapu Storm is going to be really good. If your opponent gets, like, a quick turn to GX, Gardevoir GX or something, you can just force them back to their deck. It'll definitely be good with Water Box, and it'll definitely be good with Aqua Patch. I don't really know what counters it. There's really nothing that can counter it, to be honest with you. It's got no weakness, so I don't think Tapu Fini is countered by much, so I think Tapu Fini is a pretty good card. Unfortunately, though, it's kind of lackluster, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It's probably the worst of the Tapus that we've gotten so far, unfortunately. Next up is Necrozama GX. Um, this is definitely one of my favorites in the set. It's really underrated. It's got a lot going for it. So it's got this good ability, Light's End, um, which makes it so that you can't be damaged by colors Pokemon, so Tauros and Drampa won't be able to attack you, which is pretty pretty good, since Drampa and Tauros are two big colors Pokemon in the format right now. Um, plus, you got Mega Rayquaza immunity also, which is awesome. Primatic Burst is really good, too. Um, discard all Psychic Energy from this Pokemon does 60 times, or 60 plus the, for the amount of energy you discard. This comboed with something like Metagross could be very good. You can get, like, two Metagross in play attached for the turn. You can definitely make Prismatic Burst be really good. So I think Necrozama has a lot of potential. 
Um, it is weak to Psychic, so yeah, it is countered pretty hard by Garbodor and Espeon, two really popular cards. I think the weakness to Psychic is pretty bad, but again, I think Garbodor might die off in play if Pokemon want to ban it, or if, of course, Gardevoir, since Gardevoir will probably become the best deck in the format. I think, I think Garbodor might die out a bit, so it might give Necrozama some potential to pop up. Um, plus, it has a very good GX attack, Black Ray. Um, this alone makes Nekozama possibly just be a good tech in any deck you want, since Black Ray does uh, for three colors energy, so any energy you want, which makes it splashable, right? It does 100 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon GX and EX. It's not affected by weakness or resistance. This is an insane attack. Um, we already know that spread has been pretty popular with Decidueye and Coco and Espeon, but this is just nuts. Um, Black Ray GX is super powerful. I think you can put this in Decidueye GX. So I think Necrozama will be playable in Decidueye. You can be played with Baby Coco Flying Flip. You can probably just base your deck around Black Ray. Like instead of using Metagross, Necrozama, you can probably just use it with Espeon and Baby Coco. So I think Necrozama is a really strong card. It's got potential with Metagross. It's got a good ability. And it's got a very good GX attack. The only downside is its weakness to Psychic. But again, we might see Psychic decline with Gardevoir being played. So I'm going to give Necrozama a 7 out of 10 because it is pretty interesting. Next up we have Machamp GX. Unfortunately, I think Machamp is a little weak. Again, it does have a weakness to Psychic, so again, Garbodor and Espeon kind of wreck it, but it is interesting. A stage 2 fighting Pokemon with some pretty decent attacks thanks to strong energy and carbank support um, and choice ban. Crosscut for 2 energies, um, you do 60 damage. If your opponent's like Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, does 120 damage, which is pretty good. Um, again, with strong energy and choice ban, you can turn that into 170. Um, and it's only if it's an evolution, which we already know right now, the format is very evolution heavy, so this is perfect. Earthbreaker for three energies does 130, a strong energy makes it 150, a choice band will allow you to do 180 damage, so you can take better one shots. Um, Muscle Punches, it's just attack, does 180, again, strong energy choice band does more damage, and it's not affected by resistance. So I think Machamp GX is pretty average, um, again, weak to Psychic, again, Espeon and Garbodor have a field day with it. But again, Psychic might die off with Gardevoir popping up. We'll see, though. I think Machamp is definitely going to be a very, very good card. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I don't know why I said it's going to be a very good card. I slipped there. But it is going to be a 4 out of 10 for me. I think it's definitely got some potential. Um, but unfortunately, with Lycanroc and Zygarde being a lot better, Machamp kind of sits on the sidelines. I think maybe down the road it could be good if Strong Energy rotates. I think Machamp will not be as good. I'm only giving it a 4 to 10 because it's interesting since Psychics might have some dying off potential with Gardevoir and since it has enough support to actually be okay. So I'll give it a 4 to 10. Uh, next up is Alolan Muck, my favorite GX in the set other than Necrozama. Alolan Muck has a lot of potential with Salazzle, which is all the hype. It also works with the Raichu in the set too, but I think Salazzle is better because it puts two special additions on. So Muck's mainly used for its chemical breath attack. It's a stage 2 dark type, which is also pretty cool. Or stage 1 Dark Type, not stage 2, sorry. Um, it's a stage 1. A chemical Breath does 10 damage plus 70 more damage for each special condition affecting your opponent's Pokemon. So you just drop Salazzle, you burn poison them, and then you chemical breath them for 150 damage, which is pretty powerful because a choice band turns it into 180, not to mention the Salazzle puts an extra 30 on the board. So you're doing 210 damage with chemical breath with a choice band just because of Salazzle. I think that's really, really good. Um, not to mention Savipers in the set. You can use Saviper to do even more damage. Um, you can have like two Savipers in play, which lets you like take a one shot on Gardevoir GX, which is pretty nice. So I think Muck GX has a lot of potential. You can also combo it with Alolan and Muck from Sun and Moon to disrupt some decks like Coco and Lele's and stuff like that. Crunch is okay. 4 for 120 is weak, but you're already probably going to be able to do that thanks to Chemical Breath needing a few energies. Tri-Hazard is a cool GX attack. It's the first GX attack without having to need energy. Unfortunately, I don't think it's very good because with a lot of switching cards like Zork and Acerola and Switch and Olympia and Escape Rope, I think Tri-Hazard isn't a good GX attack, but if you need to and you pull it off, it can pay off really nicely. It switches one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. That Pokemon gets burned, paralyzed, and poisoned. So I think Mach GX is definitely going to be a pretty cool card. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It is pretty good with Salazzle, and it has potential. It is going to be countered by fighting Pokemon like Lycanroc and Marshadow. Also, if Gardevoir decides to just run Comfy in their deck, then Alolan Muck is pretty much useless against them, since you are they are resistant to uh, Dark, which is pretty bad. So I think its biggest counters are going to be killer like Comfy and Lycanroc and Marshadow. But I think Muck does have some potential to be a pretty decent deck. Uh, next up... We have Darkrai GX, 10 out of 10, 
I have to give it a 10 out of 10. It's a really good card, not only in Standard, but in Expanded, it's crazy. It's got an ability, which is why everyone's hyping it up. Once you're in turn before you attack, if this card is in your discard pile, you may play this card to your bench and put one dark from your discard pile to this card. That is insane. That is just bonkers. Okay, that is just nuts. That is pretty powerful. Not only is that good with Dark Ride, Dark Pulse, it's also good with other stuff like Gardevoir and Rayquaza, which is just amazing. I think Dark Ride GX is going to see a ton of play. Um, its attacks aren't very good. Um, I mean, they're not bad, obviously, but they're not, like, amazing. They're pretty decent. They get the job done, I guess. Um, you know, Dark Rift 130 for 3, Choice Band 160. I mean, it's not terrible. Dead End is pretty good. If your opponent's like Pokemon affected by Special Edition, that thing is knocked out. You're never really going to have them affected, so I don't think you're going to need it. But again, Dark Rift can be a decent attack if you need it. Um, but I think Dark Ride GX is amazing. In Expanded, it's really, really powerful. In Standard, it's still going to be good with Gardevoir and Mega Rayquaza and Dark Ride. Um, Dark Pulse, it's going to be good. I think Dark Ride GX gets a 10 out of 10. It's just, the, the ability alone makes it good. It is countered pretty easily by Lycanroc and Marshadow GX. Also, Silent Lab basically turns it into Sushi. So, unfortunately, those three counters are going to be pretty relevant. Um... But I think it still is going to be a pretty strong card regardless of having a few iffy counters. Uh, next up, we have Gardevoir GX. Probably one of the best cards ever printed. Like, we've seen some pretty nuts cards before. Garvador was pretty powerful. Luxray GL Level X used to be all the hype. Eveltal used to be all the hype. Mewtwo used to be all the hype. Honestly, I think Gardevoir is one of the greatest cards ever made. I mean, it is absolutely broken. I mean... It, what the heck? Not only is it a fairy type, it has so much support with fairy garden, fairy drop, comfy. Holy cow, this card is insane. Secret Spring, once during turn before you attack, you may put a fairy energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Holy cow, you can build up Gardevoir easily because it synergizes nicely with infinite force. For one energy, one fairy energy, you do 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. I mean, that is basically Lele and Mewtwo on steroids. <sighs> like... It's insane. It basically does the same thing as Mega Mewtwo Y, but I mean, Infinite Force is pretty broken when you factor in DC, Choice Band, and your opponent will most likely have two to three energies on them. So yeah, Gardevoir is going to one-shot a lot of the time. Then you have the GX attack, which, it, it I mean, this, honestly, I don't know if this GX attack is even going to stay in Gardevoir. I think Pokemon will definitely try to do something with Twilight GX, because it is pretty broken. Um, shuffle ten cards from your discard pile into your deck. Shuffle 10 cards. Any card you want. I mean, we thought Hollow Hunt was good. Lysander's Trump card got banned for a reason. Now, Twilight is great because it basically is an auto win against Garbodor. You're, you can probably play the game where you don't play many items, and then you just Twilight, Garbodor, seal the deal, put the nail in the coffin, Garbodor can't beat you. Yeah, Twilight is broken. There's so many ways to play it. There's so many different ways you can run it. You can play with Alolan Vulpix. You can play with the new Diancie. Um, which I didn't mention in this video, I forgot to make a thing for that, but Deonce is really good. Basically, Deonce, for one energy, you search your deck for a fairy Pokemon that evolves, um, and then you put that on. Just basically, you can go Routes Curlia, which is really good. It can help you against Vileplume and Garbodor, so you don't play as many items. You can play with Comfy, which I think decks will play one Comfy, because it shuts down Salazzle. It shuts down Espeon. It's pretty good. Plus, it shuts down Zorua. It can play with Sylveon, too. Magical Ribbon, you can grab... Uh, Magical Ribbon, you can just grab Rare Candy Gardevoir. Easy peasy. It can be played with Gallade. I think Gardevoir will play one Gallade, just so you can have Premonition, and so you can have Sensitive Blade to... I mean, not really knock anything out, but it's still a good backup attacker. Fairy Drop could be used. You can probably play one or two. You can play Max Potion, since you can Twilight them right back into the deck. Gardevoir is broken. Now, this is definitely going to see good play, but... This is definitely going to make Metal Pokemon become relevant, which then makes stuff like Salazzle GX even more relevant, because Metals will start seeing more play, because Gardevoir is going to start seeing more play. Metagross is going to pop up a lot more now. Excadrill could see some good play. Some decks might even tech Magearna in the deck so they can use Soul Blaster to one-shot Gardevoir. I mean, Gardevoir is going to change the game completely. It is broken, man. This card is insane. Um, I think Day 1 Gardevoir is going to be way too expensive <laughs> to get. I don't even know if I'm going to make a Gardevoir video Day 1 because of how expensive they're going to be. I only have 100 packs, okay, I'm not gonna, gonna people are gonna be asking for like 50 packs to get a Gardevoir, no way, I'm, no, not gonna happen, um, hopefully I can pull a few Gardevoirs from a pack opening video I do, from saving up coins, next up we have Marshadow, I left, I, I didn't put this card in chronological order, but Marshadow is here, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10, it's pretty dang good, um, it's definitely gonna be a good way to counter Darkrai, which is gonna be pretty popular, 
Um, also steps back to White Galley could be good, obviously. Um, Marsh Shadow is a great counter to Darkrai. I think Dex will tech in one Marsh Shadow to counter Darkrai. Darkrai can also tech in a Marsh Shadow for the mirror match. Um, Beatdown is pretty good. I'm just joking, Beatdown sucks. <laughs> um, Peerless 100 Blows is also kind of bad. You just can't do for Shadow Hunt. The strategy you can do with Marsh Shadow is you can go Marsh Shadow, Tauros in the discard pile, Choice Band, Horn Attack them for 90, One Shot Darkrai. Um, you can do a Lugia too. You can't do attack with Lele because Lele's attack isn't affected by weakness or resistance. Um, but an expanded Marsh Shadow is going to be great with Night March. So I'm going to give this card an 8 out of 10. I think Marsh Shadow will be used in a lot of decks just to counter Dark Rhine and stuff like that. So I really like Marsh Shadow. It is countered by Psychic. So again, it's going to be weak to Psychic like Garbodor and Espeon. It only has 150 HP though. So it's like really easy to counter regardless. So it's not like just because... It's weak to Psychic means, oh, Psychic's an auto loss. I mean, a lot of stuff is going to just wreck Marsh Shadow. I mean, it's super, super weak. Um, it's not got a lot of HP. Marsh Shadow, I think, is definitely a good card, though. It's definitely getting 8 out of 10. A lot of decks will use this, especially if Dark Ride gets big. Um, next up, we do have Neuver and GX. Now, Neuver and I'm on the scale on. I'm just, I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. But I definitely think Neuvern can go to a 6 or a 7. Yes, it's good with Double Dragon. However, when Double Dragon rotates in a few months, Neuvern will be pretty trash. It'll go from 8 to like a 4 to 3. Um, so you can probably combo it with Vile Plume and Double Dragon Energy. Basically, Neuvern has Distortion. Um, your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. It's just Seismitoad's Quaking Punch. It does more damage, so you do 80 with a Choice Band. Then it has Loud Sonic, which is Giratina's, um, well, not, not the complete attack, but half of it. Loud Sonic does 120. Your opponent can't play any special energies from their hand during the next turn. That is really powerful because with Double Dragon, it powers up quicker, but you can also combo that with Vile Plume to make it really hard. Um, but a lot of decks play special energy. Again, Raichu will play it. McCraze will play it. Garbodor or any deck that plays DC will be countered by this. And has Boom Burst GX, which could be used with Espeon and Baby Coco. Um, does 50 damage each your opponent's Pokemon. Very similar to... Gigatron, except 60 and only to the bench. This does it to everyone. Again, this could work with Espeon. You can use it with Flying Flip and Espeon. So I think Neuburn has a lot of potential to be very good. It will definitely see play, for sure. It'll definitely see play. However, I think Gardevoir is going to put in its place. And this is why I wanted to give Neuburn a 7 out of 10, because it is pretty bad. But Neuburn is going to be a good counter to deck that counter Gardevoir. Again, Metagross will like lose to Neuburn because they'll shut down rare candies and stuff with Distortion. Um, but yeah, it's countered by Gardevoir. Gardevoir will be the best deck in the format. It's going to wreck Neuvern. This is going to make Neuvern a little less good. I think that's where Neuvern is going to get a little less good is because of Gardevoir. I think, honestly, it should be 7 out of 10. I'm going to give an 8 out of 10, though, because it is pretty dang good regardless. But again, with Gardevoir being the best deck, I think Neuvern is going to be smoked. Next up, we have the new Vile Plume. Unfortunately, this card is not very good. It's interesting... <laughs> It's got this ability, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's basic Pokemon can't attack, but in a format where evolutions dominate, it's not very good. Yes, it's Force Giant Plantable, but it's still not very good. Um, Downer Shock isn't a good attack, plus it takes a lot of energy to build up. Um, you could see it in like one in like Decidueye Plume. You can use this as like a stalling tactic over using Jolteon, um, but again, it's not very good. I could see it in like Umbreon. I mean, <laughs> Umbreon is like another good partner, I guess. I mean, Soul and Sandslash. Um, I think Vile Plume isn't very good, though. It's good with Forest. You could see it in Decidueye Vile Plume. I just think it's not really that good. Its ability just doesn't cut it. You know, with an Evolution Heavy meta, it's not good. Yeah, it'll counter Darkrai, but really, and Volcanion maybe, but that's about it. It's not a good ability to have at all. Plus, Hex Maniacs in the format. Not very good. Um, it's just countered by anything that isn't a basic. It's just not a good card, I think. I think this card is not going to see much play at all, so I'm going to give it a 1 out of 10. Not to mention, when Force rotates, I think Vile Plume will fall off completely, if it even sees play. Next up is Kingdra, another card that I'm kind of iffy on. Um, it is weak to grass, so yeah, it gets hit hard by Decidueye, Lorantis, and Bulu. But, you know what? It's got some attacks that do 1 for 90, which is still worth looking at, right? So, for one water, you do 90 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon that has any damage on it. You combo this with the new Potown or Magma's Base or Flying Flip. That's not too bad. That's not too bad of an attack. 1 for 90 is definitely doable. Um, 140 HP, not a whole lot of HP for Stage 2. But you can heal it with Rough Season Max Potion. Tornado Shot, discard a water from this Pokemon, does 90. This attack does 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's not too bad either. Um, I think Kingdra is definitely interesting. However, I... Gotta give it a 2 out of 10. It's the stage 2. 
It's not got a lot of HP. Yeah, 1 energy 90 is really relevant, but in an era where grass Pokemon are very powerful, I don't really see Kingdra seeing much play. Um, you compare with Ninetales to Tornado Shot and Brine with Ninetales and Ice Blade and stuff like that, it's not terrible, I guess. It definitely is interesting. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. I think it's just not going to cut it. I, I think it'll be an interesting idea to look at, but I don't think it'll see much competitive play. I gotta give it a 2 out of 10. Maybe 3 out of 10 if I'm feeling like nice and generous, but I gotta give my boy Kingdra a 2 out of 10. Next up is the new Darkrai. Now I think this card is pretty pretty good as a 1 of index. Um, it's got the attack Dark Raid for a Dark and a DCE. You do 80 if your opponent's Pokemon has used a GX attack. Or if your opponent has used GX attack, sorry, does 160 damage. So again, Choice Band 190, pretty relevant. Um, you could probably see this as like a 1 of and maybe Turbo Darkrai. I doubt it though. You can probably see it a one of in Zoark um, Drampa list. You can even see Darkrai just be teched into anything. Like any decks could just run a Dark Energy or like Rainbow Energy. So I think Darkrai is pretty good. It could be used maybe with like Decidueye or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to trying to think of possibilities. I'm gonna give it a six out of ten because it does seem like a decent tech. Your opponent can technically counter it if they choose not to play their GX attack until late in the game. But decks that will use your GX attack early on, like Sokaleo and Tauros. Maybe Metagross too. Just decks that will definitely GX attack very early on will get punished with Dark Raid. So I think Dark Raid is pretty interesting. It's definitely a decent tech support card, so I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It is cool. Next up is the new Crabumble. This card is kind of cool. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Um, it's got the attack Guts Hammer for 1 energy to 80. This Pokemon um, does damage to itself equal to the number of damage counters already on it, but 1 for 80 is pretty dang funny. Strong energy, so you can turn it to 100, a choice band you do 130, put some evolutions down like Flareon, Vaporeon, and uh, Jolteon, you can probably one-shot stuff like Metagross, Decidueye, Lorantis. I think it's kind of cool. I think Guts Hammer will be a fun attack to try out. Um, you can use it with Wally too, just turn one Guts Hammer, donk something, pretty awesome. I think Crabumble is pretty funny. I'm just going to put out a 4 out of 10. I think it's definitely cool. Maybe someone will try it out and make it work. Um, maybe 4 out of 10 is too generous. Maybe a 3 out of 10 is a little better. Um, but once you damage it, it's kind of getting worse. But it's still pretty good. Regardless, 1 for 80 is nothing to laugh about with the fighting support you already got. Next up is the new Rabombi. I think this card might be a little too overhyped. Now, it's like the opposite of Starmie. Once during turn, you may search your deck for two basic energies, put them into your hand. This is similar to Starmie's attack where you discard a card from your hand, put two energies from your discard back into your hand. I think that's effects a little better, though, because you'll use it more with Sceptile and Volcanion and Greninja, and Rabombi is good in the early games, not the late game. So... I think it's interesting to take a look at. You can also pair with the new Gardevoir to get energies from your deck for Gardevoir. I think that also is pretty relevant. I think Honey Gather is a good ability. I think some decks will try it out. You can use it in maybe Lorantis, get two energies in your hand, and then Sycamore them away, get them to discard for Flower Supply. That could be comboed pretty nicely. I just think Rebombi isn't as good as Starmie, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. It is countered by Hex Maniac and Guzma. The reason why it's countered by like Guzma, Lysander, because it's only got 70 HP. If your opponent sees Rabombi as a bit of a threat to make those Volk decks and Greninja decks be more powerful, they're gonna try and Lysander it out, knock it out. It's super weak. It's gonna get knocked out by a lot of stuff. Hex Maniac disrupts it. Not to mention Starmie's just better because Volcanian Steam Up, Giant Water Shuriken is gonna get energy in the discard pile, and not the deck. So I think Rabombi, it's not as good as everyone might like it to be. Um, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Next up is going to be Rotom Dex. I mean, it's not a bad card. You can combo with Artillery and Unknown. Look at the top 4 cards of your deck, put them on top of your deck in any order, or shuffle them back into your deck. Not terrible, right? You can find a card you need, and then Artillery, Abyssal Handed, then Unknown it. It's pretty nice. Um, however, if there's nothing you find there, it's kind of just a dead card. Malo is 20 times better anyways. Um, not to mention, if... You make this a dead card, Garbodor eats that up. So yeah, I think Rotom Dex is okay. Maybe it'll work. Maybe someone will make it work with Octillery and Unknown, and it'll actually turn into a pretty cool card. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. Um, Again, it's comboed with Octillery and Unknown, okay. But for now, I think it's just kind of mad. Mallow just does it way better. Next up is M Muscular Dumbbell, I think. I can't actually remember the name of the card. Um, Attach a tool... Or yeah, if this Pokemon is attached to a stage 1, it gets 40 more HP. So it's like Choice Band, or not Choice Band, sorry, Fighting Fury Belt without the 10 damage. But you can put on a stage 1. 
Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, Choice Band is 20 times better, Field Blower is very common, and you're not doing more damage, which really does make all the difference. Like, Choice Band, you'd be surprised how relevant Choice Band is now. Like, I don't think decks can even afford not to use Choice Band. Um, so yeah, I think this card is not very good. You can definitely use it with Sylveon, give Sylveon 240 HP, which I think is pretty dang awesome. I think this card will see play in Sylveon for sure. Um, so I'll give it a 3 out of 10. It's okay. I'm Maybe in the future someone will make this work. But again, with Choice Band being 20 times better and Field Blower in the format, I think this card is going to just sit as like a no. Next up is Kawaii. This card is okay. Um, search your deck for up to four fire energies, put them on a one year Pokemon. It is pretty cool. There's a lot of different cards to use it with. You can use a Volcanion, uh, your turn does end, but you can use a Volcanion, Charizard GX, Turnator GX, Incineroar. You can use it with any Pokemon, so like Lugia and Tapu Lele could use this. Um, you can also use it with Mega Rayquaza. You can put four fires on it and then lightning the next turn, Dragon Ascent for 300. That could be pretty fun. So I think this card definitely has a lot of potential. Um, yeah, I think it'll see play, but I think maybe after the Volcanion dies out, I think Quad Turdinator could start playing this. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It is a pretty good card. You turn does end, but I think it is searchable with Lele also, so it's like really easy to turn one in, so it's not a big deal. I definitely will give this card a 6 out of 10. It is pretty dang good. Um, it will give Fire Pokemon some more support, which I think they needed after Blacksmith rotated out. Next up, we have Palmerera. Plumerera. Discard two cards from your hand. If you do, discard an energy, attach one of your opponent's Pokemon. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. Because it's any energy you want. Not to mention, you could combo this with like a knockout. You knock out your opponent's active, then you get rid of the energy on a Pokemon they bring up, and then they can't attack you. That could be very good. I think it'll be mainly played in Sylveon and like Houndoom Mill. Um, unfortunately, you have to discard two cards from your hand, which could be detrimental. Not to mention, yeah, it's not as good as Flurgum. Being able to give an energy on your opponent's field is good. I think this card definitely has some potential to be okay. When Flare Gun rotates, it could be good. I mean, in Expanded, this could be pretty good with Execute. So I'll give it a 5 out of 10. I might be a little too high. Maybe 4 out of 10 is a little more reasonable. I ter I personally think this card could be an interesting tech supporter. Um, next up, we have... Uh, I can't even remember the name of this card. That's how bad it is. The retreat cost of each basic Pokemon in play is one colorless more. Unfortunately, basics are not really very popular right now. Even if it was like a water box deck, they'd have mana fee. And Floatstone's in the format. Um, yeah, Evolutions on the stadiums will counter it. It's decent in Sylveon, but Sylveon is better with Sino Lab, I think. So, yeah, this card isn't very good. Just, let's just move on. Next up is the new Gyarados. I kind of like this Gyarados. I think it could be good in like a stage 1 box deck as like a cool water type attacker. I mean, stage 1's never really had like a good water attacker to use in like a stage 1 themed deck like Vespaquin or Zoark. So I think it's pretty cool to have a water type attacker that could deal with um, Volcanion. And since Fire is definitely going to get some a little better this format, we could see Carper being a decent tech supporter. Or not, not tech supporter, but like a tech option to have. Um, you can use this in a Stage 1 box deck. You can run it in Vespaquin. Vespaquin would be really good in. Um, it's mainly just Carper. This attack is 50 damage from her, each Magikarp in your discard. It is good with Stage 1s, I think. A lot of Stage 1s can use it. If you make a Stage 1 box, you have a Water-type coverage against Fire Attacks, which is pretty nice. It could be used in Gyarados as a one-of if you're scared of Coco. Um, we'll see how that works out. It might not be very good. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. I think it's definitely going to work for Stage 1 kind of theme decks. We might see the revival of like some kind of like fun stage one decks that could definitely maybe use the effect of having a water attacker that uses a DC to knock out fire types. I like Gyarados. I, I definitely think it's pretty decent. I know it's not good, but we'll give it a 4 out of 10. I'm going to be nice for this one. Uh, next up is the new Raichu. This card I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. It's just not very reliable. And once in turn you may play this, or when you play it, to evolve your Pikachu, um, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Okay, not too bad. Paralysis is really good. They can't attack, but keep in mind with Acerola, Olympia, Switch, Escape Rope, Zoark, Tapu Koko in the format, I think this ability is pretty unreliable. We could see it in Alolan Muk as like another way to get Chemical Breath off. It could see play with Vespaquin too. Um, maybe it's like a one of in Vespaquin. Um, if you can't one shot with B Revenge, you can just fry to them, two shot them. That could work, I guess. That's a decent option. I think Raichu is meh. I just think it's just the fact that there's way many, many ways to get out of paralysis. I think it kind of kills it. I'll give it a 2 out of 10. Um, next up is the new Surviper. I really like this card. Um, it's amazing and expanded. Um, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. But we'll look at what it's good with. 
Um, well, its ability, put one more damage counter on your opponent with poison Pokemon between turns. You can put Force of Vipers in play, that's 40 more poison damage. Combo that with Super Intense Poison with Tox Effects, which is one of its best partners, that's 140 damage. You can then use Salazzle and Aridos to get the poison into play. You can use Toxapex. I think Saviper will be really good. It could be great with Salazzle, um, GX Salazzle, and Salazzle Muck just to do a little bit more damage. I really like this. It is countered by Hexmaniac and Silent Lab, of course, but I do like Saviper. I think Saviper is a pretty dang cool card, so I will give it a 6 out of 10. I think it will see some play in some archetypes, especially in Expanded. Next up is the new Dusnor. This is a pretty cool card. Um, Kind of skeptical on it, though. Dark Invitation, once you're in turn before you attack, you may have your opponent reveal their hand, put a basic Pokemon you find there on your opponent's bench, then put three damage counters on it. Now, it's similar to Target Whistle, but Target Whistle was the discard and you didn't damage them, but this could very well good, go good with Mind Jack. I think it'll be too clunky since it's stage 2, though. Um, you could play with Ninetales as Ice Blade, so you can snipe stuff for, eight, um, for 80 because they're already going to take the 30 damage. Um, Mind Jack is a good attack. It's basically like Zork's Mind Jack, but it already does 30 base damage. I do like Dustnor. I think it's a unique card. We'll see where it goes, though. It is weak to Dark, so again, Dark Rye can kind of eat it up. Zork eats it up. I think maybe down the road it'll definitely be a decent attacker. I think this card will be good down the road, but for now, I think it's just going to be a mech card. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Um, it can be countered, though, by Dark Types and Ultra Ball. That your opponent can Ultra Ball away, like, Pokemon they don't want to have in their hand for Dark Invitation. Again, it's easy to control um, Dark Invitation and Mind Jack. That's a bit of a problem. But, you know, Dustmore's not bad, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Um, next up, we have Rhyperior. Rhyperior's interesting. Um, it's basically Aggron from the old days. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. That's a good ability. Combo that with Charizard GX's Raging Out. Combo that with Melting Horn. That can be very deadly. Not to mention, Rhyperior can be reused over and over again with Super Scoop Up, Acerola, and Devolution Spray, which is pretty dang good. Even though it is a stage 2, which is kind of clunky. But I think it will go well with stuff like Sylveon and Charizard and Houndoom. Um, the only problem is Gardevoir and Brock's Grit are going to be pretty big cards. I mean, not Brock's Grit, but Brock's Grit is still played in a few decks. But Gardevoir probably being the biggest thing that will shut down Rhyperior. Again, Mill has potential with all the cool cards we're getting, but Gardevoir is just going to be too good. Um, I'll give Rhyperior a 3 out of 10. The fact that it's a stage 2 makes it a little clunky, and Gardevoir is really going to be popular. But yeah, Rhyperior is still interesting. It has a lot of good things going for it, um, just in the wrong time. Next up, Alolan Radicate. This card, I think, is going to be really good. Um, it's a really, really good card. For no energy at all, you can do 10 damage. If it has a tool on it, you can do 60 damage. 60, not a bad amount for no energy. Um, but again, it has to have a tool on it, so you can just put Choice Band on it, and then it's going to do 90. Zero energy for 90 damage is super good. I mean, this lets you just put Raticate in any deck you want that uses Choice Band. So yeah, this is a really good attack. It lets you get damage on the board without having to put energy on board. You can build up your bench while you do Reinforced Fang. That is pretty dang effective. So I'm going to give this card a 7 out of 10. It's techable in almost anything. Feel Blower um, does counter it. Once they Feel Blower you, you're only doing 10 damage. Then Raticate is pretty useless, but I do like it quite a bit. Um, being able to do 90 damage for no energy while you build up Pokemon on the bench is definitely nothing to laugh about. It is pretty good. Uh, next up is the new Zygarde. Another really hyped card. Unfortunately, it is weak to Fairy, so it gets wrecked by Gardevoir. And, of course, Double Dragon Energy is rotating very soon, which kills this card completely, but it's still interesting. It's a basic Pokemon 150, which is, I think, the most amount of HP on a basic Pokemon that isn't an EX or GX, which is pretty cool. Um, so, Land Crush, 3 energies, does 80, not too bad. Core Enforcer does 150, then you have to discard a Dark and a Fairy on it. Not too terrible. Um, again, Double Dragon Energy is in the format. You can also combo this with Max Elixir, maybe pull off like a turn 1. Core Enforcer, Choice Band, 180 damage, Donk like a Tapu Lele or something. You know, that's pretty good. Um, put some early pressure on You could maybe use it with Vika Volt. Obviously, you can, you know, put a Double Dragon on it and then go Vika Volt, Strong Charge it up. And then do 180 damage every turn. Um, discard Double Dragon, run a few special charges to get it back. I think Core Enforcer could be a pretty decent attack. Um, I mean, if you're super duper crazy, you can tech this into Gardevoir for no reason at all. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's okay. I'll give it a 3 out of 10. Since it loses support, it is weak to one of the biggest cards that's going to come out of the format. 
Um, so yeah, I think it's okay. We'll see where it goes though. I'll give it a 3 out of 10, just because I'm nice. Next up is the new Porygon Z, another card that's mediocre, but Espeon GX is 20 times better. It has format. Once you're in turn, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may use the ability to evolve each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon, put the highest stage back in their hand. It's Espeon GX's attack and an ability. This is good because it doesn't attack you for the turn, meaning you can de-evolve something into like an 80 or 60 HP Pokemon and then knock them out. Combo this with Black Ray, combo this with Flying Flip, combo this with Gigatron, I can definitely see Porygon Z being a cool tech card. Definitely a Necrozama Dex. We'll see though, it is a stage 2, manually evolving it also, which kind of hurts it. Uh, we'll see where it goes. It is countered by a base, an all basics deck, again. Your opponent can just play like Darkrai or something, and then this card is useless, but it is still an interesting card nonetheless. I think it's good with um, spread decks. Uh, next up we have Torment Spray. This card is pretty bad. Choose one random card from your opponent's hand, have them reveal it, discard that card if it is a supporter. Yes, you can use this with Gumshoes GX and make it good. Yes, it's good with Sylveon, I guess, if you get lucky. However, it's an item card, and it's just an item you burn for Garbodor. I think it's pretty useless in my opinion, so I'll give it a 1 out of 10. It's just not very good. Um, next up, we have Super Scoop Up. By far one of the best reprinted items we get. Yes, Super Scoop Up is on a coin flip. Yes, Acerola is coming in the set, but Super Scoop Up is super good regardless. It's comboed with so many good things. It's comboed with Force of Giant Plants. It's comboed with Tapu Coco. It's comboed with Tapu Lele. Even more cards probably I can name, but I forgot. It's just that good. 9 out of 10. The only counters you can get is getting Tails. If it gets Tails, that could definitely cost you. If, if it's like you're in a situation where if this card gets Heads, I'm going to win. But I got Tails instead, so I'm not going to win. You know what I mean? So... That is a little risky, but it's still a very prominent card regardless. So I definitely am going to give this a 9 out of 10 for sure. It's going to be an amazing card with Coco and Lele. The fact that you can just reuse Lele is also really good. Next up is Guzma, the huge big bad boy of the set. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active Pokemon if you do switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. This is a dang good of supporter effect. I really like Guzma quite a bit. Again, Lysander is rotating soon. This will be the go-to card. It combos nicely with stuff like Lapras and Volcanion that you can, you know, re-attack with the following turn. Um, it combos with Galissapod too. So, it, yeah, it's really good. The only thing that counters it is if you don't have anything to bring in to attack or retreat. That would be the only problem with playing Guzma. Yeah, um, since it's like, oh, if I had the Lysander, I wouldn't have to deal with that issue. But I think Guzma is really good. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It combos with a lot of good things. Um, and yeah, I think it's really good. Next up, we have... I don't even remember this name. That's how bad the card is. Basically, each player shovels their hand into their deck, draws and draws a new hand of the same number of cards. It's so meh. Like, it's one of those meh cards. With N and Sycamore in the format, I just don't see this card working. So I'll give it a 2 out of 10. It's not really used with anything, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, it's not a good card at all. Um, next up... We got Potown, one of the best stadiums that we're going to be getting in this set. Whenever your opponent plays a card from their hand to evolve a Pokemon, put 3 damage on that Pokemon. That's insane. The fact that we're in an evolution heavy meta is already really broken for this. It combos with Drampa, since with rotation, we're losing Team Magma Seeker base, so Potown immediately replaces it. But this stadium is so good you can put in a lot of decks. Some decks struggle to put stadiums in them, so Potown can be great. Um, it is countered, of course, by when your opponent just bumps it and then evolves. Also, an all basics deck could easily counter this, like Darkrai or Baby Coat or like Tapu Coco or something. But for the most part, it is a really good stadium card. I'm definitely going to give this an 8 out of 10. It's really good. Combo's good with Dranta. Um, next up is Acerola, by far one of the best supporters. It's like AZ on steroids. It's best with, like, everything. Okay, any any deck can just run one or two of these in the deck. It's great with Force Giant Plants, it's great with Tapu Coco, and it's great with Tapu Lele. Um, I forgot to choose, I forgot to put the text in. Basically, you return one Pokemon from your hand and all cards attached to it if it has any damage on it, which is just awesome. So, Acerola is a definite good card. It's amazing. It's countered by really nothing, and it's comboed with so many good cards. But, uh, yeah, that's my set review of Burning Shadows. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit like button, please. Make sure you guys like and subscribe because it took me so long to make this video. But thanks for watching, guys. That was my set review. I know I missed out a few cards. Um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't able to find all the scans for every card in the set. Um, because I know promos will be coming in. I think Serena EX might be in this, or GX might be in the set too, maybe. It was a pretty cool set review, though. If you guys enjoyed, hit the like button. This will definitely be the new format for set reviews when I decide to do them. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys on another video. And, uh, yeah, sub to help me on the road 2K subs, and have a good day. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.